Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in on you. I hope that you guys have gotten your day off to a good start. I'm stopping in uh, to share something with you that I hope will help you uh, drastically in a certain area of your life. I want to talk to you about dealing with toxic and draining relationships and alleviating the situation in which uh, you are engaging people who are taking away from you, draining you of your energy, draining you of your uh, zeal and drive, just really creating a negative environment around you that sucks the life out of you. And I'm going to talk to you about that because it's very difficult to excel in life when you have a situation where you're hemorrhaging energy, hemorrhaging. See, uh, in a proper relationship, you are literally investing energy. And when you invest energy, you reap a return. But when you're hemorrhaging energy, you are losing energy that does not reciprocate or reinvest itself in the way of producing more energy on your behalf. When you're functioning in healthy relationships, there's this reciprocal effect in which you pour into someone else and their energy, if nothing more than an appreciation and activation. For instance, you've got somebody that you love and you care for, and they are in a situation and they're struggling and they come to you and they're all down and you pour into them, you invest in them, you give them advice, you give them encouragement, you lift them up. They may not have to return the favor in lifting you, but you'll get the energy back from them when they show the appreciation and they activate the advice you gave them and apply it to their lives and you see the benefits. So then that charges you, recharges you and, 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 and invigorates you and it keeps you going. But if you got somebody, they're just sucking the life up. Every time you look up, they're negative. They're whining, they're complaining. They may not be attacking you. They just might be whining about their own life. And you're steady trying to lift them and pour into them, but they're not hearing anything you have to say. But they want to talk all the freaking time about what's wrong with them, but not never taking accountability, taking into consideration what you're giving, where you're now hemorrhaging energy. You're not investing it because you're not putting it anywhere where it can produce a return. You're hemorrhaging it. And it's working against you in other areas of your life. I want to talk to you about that. But before I do, I want to tell, tell you about the new thing that I have. I, I'm really excited about it. And I want to invite you guys in. I am going to be hosting three master classes in the coming weeks. Uh, a copywriting and content creation master class, creating a profitable business online master class, and creative ma uh, creating a massive paradigm shift in your life, all of which play a major role in how you're going to fare and what you're going to do. Uh, one of the ways that I was able to recover and revive myself when I went through a very difficult time financially was through copywriting. I knew how to write. Uh, I knew how I wanted to do something. And I knew that doing it online was going to immediately leverage my efforts in ways that doing it offline could not. And so I decided to get into it. I didn't know the industry. I didn't know the market. I just knew that I wanted to. Well, the thing is, most people think you've got to be an exceptional writer to build a business online writing. And the truth of the matter is you don't. You just have to learn the basic concepts of grammar, basic concepts of uh, 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 punctuation and expression. Everybody's writing is different. And the one thing about on the internet that I've seen, I've seen some great writers and I've seen some poor writers that simply know how to get their message across with their particular writing style. And they are literally thriving because they've created their own little unique niche of how to communicate and people vibe on it. Not everybody's gonna like you no matter how well you write, but you find the right clients, you find the right people, you, write, you find the right platform. First of all, there are so many different tools out there. One is, um, uh, God, I can't think of the name of it right now, but it's one that uh, the OWL, um, where they basically will give you courses on every area of writing you can imagine, teach you how to use commas, teach you how to use periods, colons, uh, teach you how to write in a non-passive uh, way. All these things I'm going to share with you so that you can train yourself. Here's the thing. When you get ready to do something that you haven't done before, you're not going to be good at it. I was, you know, while I was a good writer, I wasn't good at putting myself on 
on the internet because I hadn't did it before. When I got on in the past, I did that by engaging people directly, one-on-one, -on -one, handshake, eye-to-eye, -eye, verbal communication. So now here I am trying to convince people that I have what they have in a, in a non-personal environment, and I had to learn it, and I sucked at it at first. But the thing is, I didn't say, okay, I can't do this, so it can't be done. I sit up and said, I can't do this well now. And I sit up and I found a way to do it, a progress. I've done a number of things. Several of the companies I operate do that. I still do it on a certain level, even though a great deal of my energy now is focused in the Visionetics Institute. I still anchor what I do with, with writing for a number of different platforms. There's one platform I write for, for instance, called Constant Content. Uh, on average, a 700 and 50 word article, which I can write in under 15 minutes, pays out about $150. Now, there are some things that go along with that. You've got to get people to buy it or whatever because it's housed, or you can get selected and hired by clients from there and write for them consistently. Another one is hire writers, another one is tech broker, another one is writer access. They're out there. And I can tell you, not everybody writing from them writes at the level I write at, and they're still doing what they're doing. It's about volume when you write for these smaller ones, and then it's about quality when you write for the ones that pay. There are places that will pay you um, upwards of over $1,000 for an article, but you've got to put in the research. It's got to be written correctly. you got to have verifiable um, sources uh, and all of this other stuff that goes along with it. These things I'll teach in that class. The thing is, if you have any desire to write, whether it's be a published author, whether it's to be someone who writes articles for a publication online or a uh, printed publication, there's a process you go through, there's a training process. There's no such thing as I can't. It's okay, where am I at? Everything that I've ever done in life for the first time, I was not great at it. I had to make up in my mind, did I really want to do it enough to invest in becoming great at it? And that's that's the difference. And so it's too many things out there for people to be sitting around and saying, I'm not happy and I'm not doing what I need to do and I can't get things done financially when in some ways out there. We've got to learn how to work together and help each other out and show. Okay, the other is creating a profitable business online. It's so many opportunities out there that people aren't aware of and I want to give an idea of it. What I love about internet businesses is it falls into my natural strategy of how I operate when I start a business and that is creating an asymmetric risk reward type situation. And what I mean by that is most people believe in order to make money, you got to invest a lot of money, whether you're investing in a business, whether you're investing in stock, whatever. But most people who win in investing have a mindset of asymmetric risk reward, which is the actual opposite. I'm looking for what I can invest as little as possible and produce as much as possible with. So I want to, when I start my companies, I look for low startups something I can start with a little to no money. And there is there's something you can do online right now that won't cost you anything but your effort and energy and, and persistence. And then you will eventually get to where you can invest in money and, and expand it, but you can literally start for free. But you've got to be willing to go and put in the work. You, and you've got to be willing to fail. You've got to be willing to tell, no, you didn't pass. No, you didn't qualify. No, go back and work on it and try again in so many days or whatever. And you just keep going. The idea of being told no is always going to be prevalent if you're trying to do something exceptional. And uh, that's something that I really want you to focus on. So uh, that's that one. And then finally, creating a massive paradigm shift. If you've got an idea of something that's blocking you from doing what it is you really desire to do or what it is you believe you were created to do. And until you create a, a paradigm shift, which is creating the way that you view life, the, the thing that creates the thoughts and beliefs through which you operate, until you are able to create that shift, you're not going to be able to do it because you will only operate at the level of your beliefs, only operate at the level of your expectations. So creating a paradigm shift is going to be absolutely essential to you being able to do something that you haven't been able to do in the past. Most people sit up and think, I can keep thinking the way I'm thinking and produce different results. But no, see, your thoughts are what creates your reality. Your thoughts are what is the initial pro process. It is the seed of whatever is to come. So you, you have thoughts. Those thoughts are, 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 are sparked by beliefs, but those thoughts eventually produce words. Those words produce energy. Those, that energy pr produces a reality and a consequence. It 
it basically supports itself in creating an idea of behavior or a type of behavior that produces a consistent result. If you're behaving in a way that does not produce what you want, you're gonna to have to change what causes the behavior. And that's what a paradigm shift is. And those classes, are the, the, the uh, values of those classes are listed in the box. The first 100 for each one of those classes will be, will be able to enroll for uh, $100 which is a significant savings. Anybody that enrolls in all three classes will get the third class free. Now, how does that work? That works in a lot of different ways. You can fill it out. There's so many ways to do the math. You can get three friends and say, oh, let's come together and sign up. And you can sign up for whatever you want to, but if you sign up together collectively, you get one class free. So you save money as a collective. But you, know, you figure out how you want to do that. Now, let's talk about dealing with toxic relationships. Uh, like I said, this is one of the best ways to work with me because it's going to be interactive. We're going to talk about a lot of things that I talk about on a daily basis, uh, things I work with my clients with on a daily basis, but you're going to have an interactive uh, environment where you're going to be able to ask questions. You're going to be able to put real life scenarios on the deck and find out how easy it is to actually solve these problems that have been enigmatic in the past because of a closed thinking mindset. We're going to find out what happens when you open your mind. Okay. Now, moving on, dealing with toxic and draining relationships. I can't express enough how devastating operating in a toxic environment is. You've got some person that's there for whatever reason, they are literally contaminating the environment with negativity in one way or another. I want to talk about a specific type of person. If it's a person that's negative towards you, that, there's only one option you have. You need to get them. You need to get that person out of your circle. If everything they come to you with is negative, if they're always talking you down. If they're always finding reasons to tell you why you can't make it. If they're always looking at picking you apart and never having anything to add. I'm not talking about constructive criticism. That's necessary. I'm talking about someone that never has anything good to say and always has something negative to say. They need to go. We're not talking about them. We're talking about the type of person that you love and you know that they they really have a a, a, a a regard for you you know whether it's love whether it's respect whether it's admiration whatever it is they're there because they actually see something in you but they have this negative mindset that all they can see in their lives is negative they don't see any reason to be grateful they don't see any reason to have joy they don't see any reason to be happy they're just unhappy all the freaking time and they want to come drop it in front of you so you can talk to them here's the problem if you are talking to them consistently on an ongoing basis and they're never improving they're literally sapping energy and life and potential out of you because you have a limited amount of resources and what you can give in a day in the way of advice, in the way of decision making, in the way of nurturing, in the way of uh, elevation and inspiration, you have a you have a store. And if you go hard and all out for the entire period that you are awake in any given day, you will you will deplete, deplete that, and you will find that the longer in the day you go, the less of it you have to give. Even when you're making decisions, as a thing called decision fatigue. It means that you make your best decisions when you're rested, when you are invigorated and, uh, and revived, and that diminishes as your day progresses. You don't make the best decisions after you've put in six and seven hours. You're mentally, emotionally, and psychologically tired in the same way you get physically tired. So you've got to understand that you have a certain amount of resources per day to give to any one given person. Now, here's the thing, just like a boxer in the ring, understands that it takes more energy to throw a punch and miss than it does to throw one and actually land. It's the same thing when you're trying to lift somebody up, when you're trying to empower someone. It takes more energy to pour into somebody that's not getting it, that's not accepting it, that's not receiving it, that's not acting on it, than it does somebody to come. One of the reasons is when you get someone that you're pouring into and they receive it, that they take it with gratitude and appreciation and they look at it and say, I'm going to act on it. I'm going to take this advice. I'm going to act on it. I'm going to produce some results with it. The energy that comes from their elevating off of what you gave turns around and lifts you. So they actually pour back into you without actually having to come into one of your problems. They literally turn back and give to you out of receiving from you. 
that energy reciprocates. It, it, it re-energizes. Re it's literally you pour it out, it comes back, depending on how fast they act on it. So that type of energy is what grows you. That's 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 in you so that you can actually go out and give to people who have no way of giving back to you and still be lifted, still be empowered, still be energized. But when you start to pour it into people who won't listen, once you start to pour it into people who can't receive it, then it starts to literally take from you. You're looking up and you, you're wondering, why, man, why am I so mean? Why am I so afraid? You start to wonder, what is negative? Thoughts come. All this stuff is because every time you give an audience to anyone, you're opening yourself to their energy. You're opening their, yourself to their suggestions. And while you may be strong in your faith, strong in your confidence, strong in all of that, the more you open yourself, the more the negative come in, the more you have to mentally fight off. Whenever somebody says something negative, there's a part of you that has to reject it. That required energy. It's, it, you've got to understand how you spend and invest your energy so that you can reserve it and use it appropriately. So every time you allow somebody negative into your environment and they do anything or say anything negative, you've got to resist that negativity or it becomes a seed. At some point, you have to choke, you have to weed out your garden. That requires energy. You have to look at what you're taking in that doesn't belong there and take it out. Your garden has to be pruned. It has to be weeded. It has to be cultivated and watered. And you've got this negative person you're giving time to that's put, put, put negative thoughts in, and then they're not taking what you're giving in the way of purity and energy and, and inspiration and encouragement and using it in their lives, which is another thing that drains you because you put something out that had no productivity. It's like swinging and missing. It takes more energy. Okay, so now we understand that that's happening. What do you do about it? Well, uh, Mel Robbins has this thing called a six-month rule. I have a 90-day rule, and that's pushing it. So we're going to talk about the 90-day rule, and you you got to come up with a time. To me, it definitely can't go past six months. With me, 90 days is the limit. But you've got to get somewhere within six months and down, and this is the thing. After you've poured into a person, time in and time out, for, for, for me for 90 days, but let's just say six months, for six months and 90, for 90 days to six months, you poured into them, you've gave them advice. They, every time you look up, the only time you hear from them is when something's wrong. They gotta come drop all of their crap in front of you. Well, you sit up and you say, I love you, I care about you, uh, I, 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 I'm committed to helping you. So you pour into them. You give them unbelievable advice. You you encourage them. You tell them who they are, even though they can't see it themselves. All the things that you're capable of doing, you're trying to lift them and trying to bring them to a level that you're operating at while still sustaining yourself, and they're just not getting it. Okay. When you get to 90 days or whatever your number is, you have you sit them down and you have a talk with them. And at this point, you say, for the last hire minute, for me, for the last 90 days, for the last three months, I sit up and li li listen to you whine and complain about your marriage, whine and complain about your finances, whine and complain about your situation at your job, whine and complain. And I've given you advice. Not once have you taken the advice, not once have you walked off with a positive mindset and an attempt to take action in your life. And so this is the new rule. We can still talk to each other, but we're not talking about your problem. We're not going to discuss your problems, but until I see you taking action to change what it is you're doing, if you're not showing that I can something I can see, or you're listening to me, you're taking it and you're using it, because this is what I know. When you take something that is proven to work and you apply it in your life, it produces results. It is a universal law. It doesn't just apply to some people. You can't come to me and tell me, man, I wish it was, it don't work for me. No, you're not using it. You're just looking for the next opportunity to complain. And if that's the case, we can't do this. Now, if you want to talk, we can talk about the news. We can talk about sports. We can talk about a bunch of things, but we're not talking about your problems anymore. We're not going to talk about your problems until you get it together. And then if they can't deal with that, then you've got to place them in that category where we can't deal with each other until you get it together. I'm not going to pour out energy on nothing. My resources are too valuable to pour off into something that's producing nothing. So this is what's going to happen. You're going to either talk, start taking action in your life or we're going to talk about and shoot the bull about nothing. But we're not going to talk about your problems. That is the... That's where you're going to find out how bad they really want it. 
See, what they've been using you for is a sounding board to bounce their negativity off of. That's, they've been bouncing their negativity off of it, just bam, bam, bam. And I'm talking about this because this is like real prevalent. This isn't like, you know, every now and then I hear about somebody doing this. Almost everybody I talk to has got this person or people in their lives, a lot of times family members, that just got their number on speed dial or will drop by their house and just sit down for two or three hours and dump nothing but crap on them. Don't pick up nothing good that they put out and go out until it's the next time to come dump again. You have too much in your life that you were designed to do to sit up and pour out precious, valuable resources in the way of energy, ideas, and resolutions on something that is not going to manifest because it does not have a desire to. You're going to have to be willing to understand that there are absolutely people out there that want nothing but to be able to complain with the hopes of getting people's sympathy to take care of their problems. And when they don't, they just complain. You don't owe anyone to be there during going landfill of trash, complaints, problems that they don't want to engage. You owe it to yourself to be a steward of your energy. You owe it to yourself to be aware of what you're investing that valuable resource of energy and time into. A lot of us are behind where we need to be because we poured into people who couldn't receive from us and we wasted energy that slowed our momentum down and it took us off course. We've all done it. I know I have. I know I've poured into people that did nothing but suck. And I did it a lot of times in times when I really needed to be very, very careful and aware of what I was doing with my energy. You got to understand that caring for someone or loving for someone never exempts you from the responsibility of managing your life correctly. You don't become a crash dummy because somebody else is in your periphery that you have a thing for. You know, that's my girl. That's my dog. That's my dude. You know, that's my mom. That's my, you know, that's my pops. But I don't care who it is. As an adult, you have a responsibility to perform in your life first. And if someone's sucking that potential out of you, it's your responsibility to stop it. Call it tough love, call it responsibility, call it what you want to call it. But at the end of the day, if you're hemorrhaging energy, how long do you think it will be? If you take a human body and it starts to hem hemorrhage blood, which is its life source, it's how oxygen gets to the extremities and the organs and everything that needs to keep living in the body. But if you start hemorrhaging, and how long before you've hemorrhaged enough that it ends your life? And think about anybody that's hemorrhaging blood, how rapidly the decrease in energy and power physically diminishes. It's, it's, it's rapid that you're, you're hemorrhaging blood and before you know it, you can't even stand up. And then you, before you know it, you're finding it hard to breathe. And then before you know it, you start to lose consciousness. Well, it happens in the emotional and the spiritual realm as well in the way of energy. If you're hemorrhaging energy, that's a reproduction or transference or reassignment of energy. If you believe in, in, in the law of physics that you can't destroy energy, you definitely can send it somewhere where it doesn't come back. And then you've got to find another way to rejuvenate that. So the time it takes to rejuvenate energy you waste could be time you're used spent on doing something valuable with it. You've got to manage that because I'm sure you have people who depend on you outside of this person who's sucking the very life out of you. I didn't say that you got to kick them out of your life. I said you got to change the way you deal with it. Look, we can talk, but we're not talking about your problems because you don't want to fix them. If you wanted to fix them, I could see you doing something to change it. But I don't see anything but you complaining. I don't want to hear it anymore. So if you want to call me and talk about, uh, you know, whatever, current events, whatever, but we're not going to allow the conversation to ever get to a point where we're discussing your problems.
Now, once I see with my own eyes that you're doing something worth doing to change your situation, I'm back on board with you. I'm in, I'm in it with you. Because now when I put energy out, you take it, you use it, 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 it comes back to me. It lifts me. It's when I see you taking what I gave you and becoming empowered with it, it automatically lifts me. I don't owe you to let you drain me. That's not a good balanced relationship. There's nothing healthy in that relationship. And so that's something that I just wanted to share with you guys. You guys have got to get to a point to where you are focused and aware of what it is you're doing. And then you sit up and you act accordingly. There's absolutely nothing that can't be done, but it takes work. It takes commitment. It takes focus. It takes a relentless mindset. Nothing is going to come easy. You're going to put it out there. And it's not, you got, but the one thing you got to understand is you got a limited amount of energy, a little amount, limited amount of resources as you move through the day. And that's why sleep is so important. Sleep is so important that you've got to be careful because I've been there where I'm so focused on the grind element that I'm going to put in more work than everybody. I started to struggle in the area of recovery and rest and my grind didn't have as much force. Why? Because I'm still cloudy. I'm still not totally re-energized. I'm not healing when something's wrong because the body needs a certain amount of rest in order to get what it needs to perform. So you've got to be aware of all these things. You've got to be operating within it all and understanding how things happen. You cannot allow somebody negative in your periphery that's intent on being negative. Because, like I said, the war you have just in rebutting that negativity takes away from you. So all of these things are things you got to think about. You've got to prime yourself to be in the best possible position to do the most with your life, to have the greatest impact on the world around you, to have the greatest force. And as I pointed out, like in these courses that I'm, I'm uh, these master courses that I'm offering, it's about saying, there is no problem that I can't overcome. And it, whether it's uh, needing more money, whether it's needing uh, or desiring to start a new business, whether it's being more impactful in the community, accessing and understanding your purpose and operating in your purpose, which is like to me it. You can, if you're not operating in your purpose, it's always going to be this big boy that's going to create all kinds of problems in a number of different areas. Even when you start making money, if you're not operating in your purpose, you're going to find this big empty void that you can't understand and you start to use your money to try to fix it. And it gets worse because it's not about money. It's about fulfillment. It's about living in your purpose. It's about serving the reason you were created and in place. In, 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 in whatever way you perceive that in your relationship with the divine supreme being of the universe, uh, and how you see that, that's your business. But you've got to understand you have a purpose. If you are operating in this world with the idea that you don't have a purpose, no wonder there are so many problems. No wonder that everything knocks you off your feet. And no wonder you can never get your bearings because purpose is what stabilizes you. And if you don't have a sense of why you're on this planet, you're going to get, you're going to, everything is going to be operated and handled in such a capricious nature. Whatever's flowing this way, I'm jumping on it. As soon as it stops flowing that way, I'm jumping off of it. Whatever seems to be working now, I'm jumping on it. When it don't work, I'm jumping off of it. And all this time you're putting into doing this, jumping on and jumping off, you're not getting anything done. You're not creating a legacy. You're not writing a narrative of power. You're not creating the example for those that follow you. You're just sitting up and jumping from place to place, trying to find comfort instead of forging your way forward and being what you were designed to be. It ain't about how easy it is. It's not about how, how, how many people don't make it right, make it happen for you. It's about you becoming committed to being what you were designed to do and saying, this is it. There is no other option. There is no other alternative. I am here to do this, and this is what I'll do, period. With that being said, look, I'm going to get off of here. I got things I need to get done, uh, but I just wanted to stop by and share this with you look i would love to work with you guys this is something that's going on uh like i said you know we're going to kick these classes off in a few weeks so i'm getting enrollment now the first 100 people are going to get a big you know a big discount 
uh, $100 to enroll. Uh, I think the least expensive class is almost $300. Uh, the most expensive class is $700. And so to get it for $100 is, you know, a great value. And I'm looking forward to working with all of you in this type of environment where we're going to feed off of one another. We're going to use the creative mindset, the out of the box lateral thinking of some people who can just step out and come up with things. And we're going to come up with solutions to the problems that you have right now with what you're trying to do in these classrooms. This is going to be an organic experience that will be powerful and explosive. I look forward to it. You guys take care. I'm about to jump off of here. As I always say, live your life on full so that you down it. With that being said, I'm out. A fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.